Let's tell them uh, Happy New Year. Uh, this is Revolution Radio, Granada Forum. I just uh, I wanted to say hello. Well, okay. <laughs> if you <this is laughs> say hello, you might as well stick around for a little bit. <laughs> no. um, oh, I was yeah, wondering... Uh, not much. Uh, we were wondering what uh, what you find interesting in the news, or what, what would you like to talk about, Jordan? Well, I find the fact that I'm still here very interesting. <laughs> 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 well, you did uh, miss the first... I, I, there's nothing Sorry. on the news that's of interest to me. Nothing. Nothing. Uh, nothing. No. Uh, okay. It's, it's, all, it's all lunacy and uh, hogwash and and uh, it's it's the thinking of our enemies, because the news media are the enemies of America. I was just thinking about that today, that with uh, Hillary Clinton holding up banks and jumping off of roofs and doing all kinds of crazy stuff and breaking the law every time she breathes a, a breath of life, she breaks the law, doing something, she's a criminal, and Obama is a criminal and mentally deranged, mentally deranged, and and all of the other mentally uh, mentally handicapped lunacy that's going on in government, <clears throat> and yet the, uh, the 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 press, the newspapers, and magazines, and television don't tell you, don't tell you anything. So why is that? Well, it uh, occurs to me that. Uh, the uh, the enemies of America is the news media because they see all the criminality and the treason, the lies and murder and bloodletting and, and shedding of blood and murdering people. They see all of that, but they're not about to tell you anything about it, nothing. And they'll just laugh it off and, <clears throat> and act, act like it didn't happen. And so for years and years, the media has been laughing things off and, and, and poo-pooing that and there's nothing to it. And so I'm of the opinion that the news media is the enemy of America because they want America destroyed. They don't want to tell you how to fix America and how to fix anything in our country. They don't want to tell you about anything good that could happen in America, they're, they're happy to tell you zero nothing about nothing, period. And so, therefore, the news media, uh, the news outlets, newspapers, magazines, etc., are, in point of fact, the, the, the major media and news medias of America are the enemy of the republic and should be arrested, put in prison, put in jail, and uh, put out of business. <clears throat> so, but that's the facts of the matter. Is that's the facts of of life. That the uh, news media today is the enemy of the American people. Period. And we still listen to them. We still turn on the nightly news to watch these treasonous uh, uh, traitors, criminals, uh, you know, giving us all kinds of important news. You know, like uh, who won the basketball game or and uh, Paris Hilton and all that nonsense, but they will never tell you anything about what your government is really doing. So that tells me that we are in the uh, grips of criminal, fascist, murdering, bloodletting criminals and traitors in, uh, in the news media, ABC, NBC, all of it is nothing more than criminality. So... That's as far as I'm concerned. There, there is the real criminal uh, uh, attacking America. There Jordan, are the real Jordan, criminals. Yes. Jordan, how, how am I supposed to make it through my day if I didn't know what Kim Kardashian was wearing this morning? Yeah, I know. Well, that's true because you, that would be a difficulty. But uh, I try and do it and try and live through it. Yeah. So as far as I'm concerned, they ought to all be hung. They ought to be hung, taken out to a tree and hang so that the rest of the world can see that America is no longer going to be bullshitted. No longer. It's not going to happen anymore. Right. And, and so it, that's, what, that's, that's what is deserving of, a, of, a, uh, of a treason. If you're a traitor and you turn on your country and you're guilty of high crimes and treason, uh, used to be they would take you out to a tree and hang you, 
that's the, that's you, what you get for turning on your country, and uh, and and helping the, our enemy, helping the enemy of your country, and so that's what the news media is. They're traitors, and they uh, they deserve to uh, they deserve what traitors get, you know, whatever the traitors are supposed to get. That's what the L.A. Times, New York Times, and and the you know Time Magazine and all the rest of them, all the leaders of the media in America should be put in prison and uh, and probably hung for treason against the country of America. Yeah, and it's so, not even that they're uh, it's not even that they're they're giving you useless news like you know every other story is a celebrity you know whatever yeah. uh, type of thing, but it's the fact that they're actually making stuff up now and they're not even hiding it. <laughs> You know, they'll they'll take a news story and they'll spin it, or they'll just outright lie and then and then blame anybody who doesn't believe them. All of a sudden, it's like, how dare you impugn the the uh, the integrity yeah, of integrity. the press? Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. And, and so, all of that I consider because they are the news media that supposedly give the people of the country the news to help the American citizens know, you know, what what to do and what's going on. They purposely have not, since as far back as I think 1950, uh, you know, 60, 70 years ago, they stopped talking to America and telling us anything. And I remember as a kid, from 50 to 55, I became very interested in listening to news. And there was some little bits, a little bit at, at that time, 50, 1955, there were a little bit of uh, interesting news uh, would come on some of the networks. Of course, the smaller stations on television and radio, they wouldn't know anything. They, they never know anything about nothing. But the, uh, but the bigger network stations once in a while would tell you something about what the CIA is really doing. And what your government and what the government is really spending the money on, and not what you thought it was. And so there were a few little programs like that back in the fifties, but right around right around 1960, and the coming of the assassination of Kennedy. After that, all news in America, in any way, shape, or form, was put under arrest. No longer could anyone find out what's going on. There is no news, not, nothing to talk about. And so now, uh, you know, Walter Cronkite said, so now what we have on every night is action news. You know, turn in the, tune in to Channel 7 Action News. If you want to see some blood shares and cars blowing up or people shooting each other, it's action news. They don't give a damn to tell you what's really going on with the Federal right. Reserve or who's really actually running the government, or who Obama actually, in point of fact, really is. But they'll show you some blood, some blood in the street, well, some shootings, or some killings, or something, yeah. and well, that's, give that's, you action news. That's the mantra that the, uh, the news people have now, which is, if yeah. it bleeds, it leads. <laughs> I like so. that. If it bleeds, it leads. Um, that's isn't true. it also too... Isn't it also true, Jordan, that um, in in during the, um, Hitler's time that they called the media the the fifth column or the fourth column? Yeah, the fifth column, right. And the fifth, the fifth column, column was always yeah. Fifth column was the news media. Even in America, it was considered to be the fifth column because it takes four columns to hold up a square. Uh, you know, it takes four columns to hold up a, a building or a, or a roof. Uh, from each end of the, uh, from each end of a house, you know, four corners, and so it's four columns to hold up the roof and hold up the building. Uh, but uh, but a fifth column uh, of government was the news media, television, and radio, and boy were they corrupt. A long time ago they were corrupt, <clears throat> and so uh, and not only do I not have any uh, respect for news in this country. Or any of the news organizations like uh, Los Angeles Press Club, of which I've been a member for some 25 years. Uh, but the press clubs, the Washington D.C. Press Corps, I have no respect for any of that. None of it, because it's all a show. It's all theater. 
And everybody knows when you go in, uh, and uh, you know you know what questions you can ask, and which questions are given to you that you can ask. And uh, it's all pre-recorded. It's all decided before you go in. And uh, if you ask something you're not supposed to, you end up dead in America. We have we have many cases of news people who ask the wrong question. And I can give you examples. And uh, and then a couple of weeks later, they're found dead in their apartment with their throat cut. And uh, and, and they it's committed a suicide. suicide. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Suicide so by two gunshots country, to the back of the head. Yeah, uh, three of them. Three, sh three, sh three gunshots rounds. in the back of the head. Yeah. And it was a terrible uh, you know, suicide. So I know that in this country, in America, if you are a real journalist, you may, you need to watch your back because you may be dead any day now. So if you know something you're not supposed to know, you better keep your mouth shut and please play dumb and pick up your paycheck, but don't open your mouth because if you do, you're a dead man. So well, and, I know and, what's going on. And, I know what's look, going look, on in this country. Yeah, look what, look what happened with Gary Webb uh, back in the 90s. Uh, they didn't even take him out right away. They just they had to destroy his character first, uh, make yep. him look like an idiot. So then they covered them covered themselves, and then they took him out yep. afterwards. Yep, and it, you know, and it well, you know, if they'll kill the president of the United States in front of the whole world, then you know they don't have any respect for the country. And so uh, I'm just amazed how much we put up with, we humans put up with. And, uh, but now, because we have continually turned our back and not want to fool with it and just don't even bother to worry about it, uh, now look at the country and the condition we're in today. We're in our very last days. We're, we're falling apart now, and we're in the last and final days of the American empire. It's going down and going quickly. <clears throat> it's because, uh, you know, if you don't care about something, well, leave it alone and it'll die by itself. And so since you don't care, people, uh, Americans don't care about government, uh, then we don't have one. <laughs> so that's, I'm just, a, I'm just well, ashamed and appalled. That well, the thing, the, the thing that's, uh, I don't know a lot of them if they don't care about it. A lot of them don't know anything about it. They're not taught it, uh, in the schools where they're supposed to be learning all this stuff and you can go out and talk to people out on the street out on you know out on the, the boardwalks here in los angeles or in downtown uh, cities anywhere and start asking them questions about what what do they think about their government and which branches and you know a little a little more uh detailed questions and they have no idea about any of it well no you're correct uh have you ever seen those little short uh, video presentations on the web, Americans are, are uh, something to Americans are stupid, are yeah. stupid Americans. Yeah. And it shows them going from, uh, you know, from uh, uh, Los Angeles on the beach and asking people what they think about all kinds of things. And the, and the people have no idea in the world what they're talking about. <laughs> Right. Uh, and, the, uh, one, the one guy was asking some kids on the beach in L.A., some young people on the beach, what did they think about Jesus going to jail for, for shooting the Pope? And, and they all stood there and scratched their head and tried to figure out why would Jesus uh, shoot the Pope? <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, funny. and they actually was trying to figure out what to say on something so ludicrous. Right. Uh, so... Yeah, they got the guy, um, Mark Dice, who I'm a pretty big fan of, who does these videos all the time uh, down in San Diego. And he goes out onto a pier down there to get people to sign a petition to stop oh, yes. people from signing a petition on the pier. And they would, <laughs> and they would sign it. They wouldn't even think about it. I, I love that. That is funny. That's, that's hilarious. And uh, I've seen him do that and that kind of thing many, many times. I, I love watching him, but it really does tell the world something about America, who we are, right. and, and well, where got, we've I, come from and where we're going. Okay, I got a question out of the chat room from Olive. 
Uh, he wants to know what what's your opinion of Trump, and do you think he's you know telling what? the truth? Um, right. I don't really have an opinion as such about Trump because, I, as I said to start off with, I, I'm not really interested in the, the matters of today at all. I'm not, I, I couldn't care less about the uh, situation in America and the world today. I, I understand it so well. I've been talking about this for 58 years, so it's, it's old hat to me. So when I see the stuff happening today, I just breathe a sigh of relief. I was talking about this back in 1959, 60, and 61. So uh, as of today, I don't give a damn one way or the other. I don't care. I mean, I've been talking about this for almost, well, for 58 years. So I don't really have an opinion anymore. As far as I'm concerned, it's all very obvious. And if you don't know what's going on by now, then maybe you're not supposed to. But I will say one thing about Trump that I do find of interest, and that is he's the first president since I have been born. I grew up with all the different presidents from 1940 on. And he's the first president since 1940, in my opinion, that actually talks to people. He actually talks to us. Uh, and, and, and it's not this plastic Hollywood uh, you know, script writers, you know, the presidents have script writers. Well, so do actors in Hollywood. They have script writers. And, and so the actors are being paid a lot of money to read the script exactly the way it was written. And so the actors are nothing more than actors are script writers. And so they have script writers. And so today, presidents all have script writers because they're just acting like they are the head of the country. They're acting like they are the president. It's just an acting job. And so uh, if you're really good at it, uh, like Ronald Reagan, well, then they pay you more and, and you, you know, live a pretty easy life uh, misleading all the people of your nation, your country. But as far as uh, uh, Trump, Trump is the first president I have ever heard who actually talks to people and, uh, and, and, and says something. While all the other presidents I have ever in my life heard, I've uh, heard them all, uh, they, they all are plastic. They're all the settlers in plastic. None of them say anything of any consequence whatsoever None of them uh, move me at all to hear presidents giving speeches. The, their speeches are all script-writing, and they all say the same BS bullshit, and they all, uh, you know, everything is always in the future. We're going to do this, and we're going to do that. And the more they talk about what they're going to do, the worse the country becomes until now today it's falling apart. So, but, but, with, uh, but with Trump, he actually says things, and 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 when I listen to him, I think, oh, how the hell did he, uh, you know, where did he come from talking about the things he does, and saying the things he does? He's actually talking like a human being, like uh, like you would talk to somebody on the street. He's actually just talking to you, telling you what's going on. That's the first time I've ever heard any president talk like him. So, you know, thank God, at least we've got somebody in there who's actually a breathing and alive and right. isn't a, a character actor, you know. So. Yeah, we had, we had decades, uh, since I've been on this planet anyway, of all these pretty much cookie-cutter uh, politicians for president. That's what I'm talking about. And That's right. I worked in Los Angeles in the Times Building in um, the 2000 presidential debates. They had the, the Republicans and the Democrats going. And if you stock the candidates side by side, with the exception of one, which was Alan Keyes, uh, you probably yeah. couldn't tell the difference between any of them. Yeah, whether they were running for something or not running, or whether yeah, they were Democrat or Republican, it doesn't matter. They all sound alike. Uh huh. They all got the same script. I think they all use the same uh, script writing program. Script writers, yeah, probably, yeah. Oh. And so that's what I'm talking about. They all sound the same. They all look the same. And after listening to all the presidents for, for 60 years, none of them have said anything about anything. Nothing. They are telling you nothing. And they just give those, uh, those little flowerly uh, you know, lectures and, 
in speeches and when it's all through, they, they didn't say anything in it just as well because you wouldn't understand it if they had so, told you something. But with, uh, but with Trump, he actually talks to people and he talks about things that presidents are not supposed to talk about. You're just supposed to go up there and grin and smile and wave and, and, uh, and you know, kiss and, and be the politician. Yeah, and kiss babies. And, and, uh, but, but actually talking to people about what's going on in the world, uh, that's unheard of. I mean, nobody does that anymore. Well, I think You're, that's uh, I concur with you 100%. I just have one year on you, and uh, I would say that Trump is uh, definitely the most intelligent president during my lifetime of 78 years. I think uh, so. I would say that. That's what I would say. He's obviously very intelligent, and because he's built nothing but but golf courses and, uh, and hotels and casinos and restaurants and all kinds of things on the East Coast, you know, from Canada down to Florida on the East Coast, that means that that tells me he has had to be in business, uh, building hotels and building large uh, operations and business with the mafia. There's no doubt in my mind. You don't build hotels in Chicago and, uh, and New York and New Jersey without the mafia. You don't do it. You either deal with the mob but you don't build nothing. And so, but he's been able to build and build and build and keep building. And he's got, and everybody that works for him and the mob that works with him, uh, you know, everything works. Everybody's happy. Everybody gets paid. So it tells me he knows how to handle himself with the mafia, with the mob, and with the organized crime. And since the United States government is the pinnacle of organized crime, uh, yeah. You know, he's about the only one that knows how to handle himself uh, right. with organized crime. Yeah, but that, that's the thing about the, uh, the mafia in Chicago and New York and East Coast. At least they're not lying about it. No. You know, look, the people no. in the government will, will take this, uh, this false offense, if you actually call them criminals. You know, they'll, they'll <laughs> act all offended. It's just like, you face up to it, you're a criminal. Yeah, yeah. And, and, the mob in Chicago, they were proud of it. As a matter of fact, they get everybody pats them on the back and, and, and loves to see them, and they've got fans and people that love to come and see them. Yeah, same <clears> thing <throat> in Vegas. Yeah. They love the mob in Vegas. So, that's right. And so, uh, but, but, but at least Trump has been able to make, a money, uh, make money on his own because most of the people who are in government have never had a real job and they've never had to work for anybody, which is good because they don't know how to do anything anyway. <clears throat> but uh, Bernie, Bernie Sanders yeah. had a real job once. That, you know, he was a carpenter of sorts that he really wasn't oh. any good at. And I think he lasted, <laughs> I think he lasted a week. <laughs> well, You're at least he tried. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I'm talking about. But most politicians have never held a job in their life. They are, they, you know, politicians, uh, uh, Tom Anderson said many years ago, politicians are like cockroaches. It's not what they get and make off with. It's what they fall into and mess up. And so it's true. Politicians don't do anything of any value. They're just always there to make some money and to run for office and to uh, do what they do, and that is talk, just just uh, that, that crazy talk, and, and everything just goes away. It's always gone, and the politicians do nothing about it because they can't. Yeah, so my at favorite, least my, Bush... Uh, I was going to say, my favorite uh, saying about politicians, and I can't remember who said it, was some comedian, said politicians are like diapers. They should be changed often and for the same reason. That's exactly well, right. Now, Red, Red Skelton said years ago, old politicians never die. They just smell that way. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> and I say that, the uh, uh, unfortunately, so many people in the American uh, public are like old Christmas tree lights. Uh, half of them don't work, and the rest are not that bright. <laughs> and today, it's... it's and today, uh, you know, we are now suffering as a country and as a people on the earth. The human race is now suffering 
and, we're, and now it's calling into question whether we are even going to be here anymore or not. I think we are calling into question the very veracity of the human race, if it's even worth saving or if it's ever going to be able to uh, you know, get, get out from under the arrest warrant that's over us now. And so I just sit quietly and watch all of this stuff, knowing that I've been talking about it since 1960. So that's Good. 58 yeah, I mean, years ago. With all the research that you've done on it, I mean, I mean you've got to see a pattern in all of this. I mean, this is all has to be pretty cyclical. As far oh, as God, yes. a lot of this is going on, and I'm not just talking about recently. I'm talking about going back. Oh no no no! no hundreds no, of years, no, thousands no. of years, thousands of years, thousands, and going back to the ancient empires of the world, you know, to all the way back into uh, India and the Hindu empires, and when they collapsed and fell, and for what reason? And then the Babylonians and the Egyptians and the Greeks and the Romans and God knows all the rest. They all fall because of the same reason. They, they work hard to get freedom. And once they've established themselves and they've got a certain amount of freedom, then they become prosperous because they're free to make money and do what they want to do. So they become prosperous. And then once you become prosperous, you begin to get fat and stupid and uh, making mistakes and you don't really care because you've got plenty of money and everybody's wealthy anyway until finally uh, corruption comes in and now stupidity and corruption begins to run the world business and leave that alone for a while and then pure old fascism comes into being with criminals who are legitimate de jure real carrying guard carrying gun carrying criminals and uh, and the people, you know, that's why they keep pushing this idea of democracy. Democracy is pure communism. Marxist Leninist communism, we call it democracy. Most people don't know that. They think democracy sounds like an American idea. No, democracy was dreamt up by the uh, by the fascists uh, to control the poor of the world, to control us. And so uh, this is what democracy is all about. As a matter of fact, I've said this before, when there's a, a riot in Los Angeles and they're burning down buildings and turning cars over and there's a, a massive, massive criminal rebellion and a riot going on, we call it a demonstration. There was a big, violent demonstration, demonstration last night. What, why do you call it a demonstration? Because that's what the word means in Greek. Demos means of the people. Demonstration means a, 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 a outward sign of the people. And so demo gives us democratic or demonstration. So a, democrat, a true democracy is uh, 35 whites hanging one black. That's true democracy. That's, that is what democracy means. The majority rules. So if you could get everybody in town or you get enough people in town to vote to kill somebody, then you can do it. Then you go out because you've got a thousand people with you. So you can go out and find somebody you don't like and everybody agrees to it. So you can take that person and hang them and kill them in public. And that's a democracy, the people speaking. That's the people's idea. The people wanted it. And so that's the worst kind of government you can have on the earth is a democracy because that means the people rule. There are no constitutions and laws and regulations. The people rule, democracy, which means when if you run for office in America, and this is a democracy, when you get in and you become president or, or a senator or congressman, at that point, once you are elected, you are now a law unto yourself. You don't have to worry about what the, what the federal laws say about you as a congressman or a senator and what you can do and what you can't do and what your, you know, what your powers are and what they're not. Because today, in a democracy, when you are elected, I am God, period. People wanted me. They elected me. I'll do whatever the damn I please, any time I please. 
and that's you know and I'll make a lot of money and sell people and buy and sell children and and run prostitution records all kinds of things I'll do whatever I damn well please because the people uh, elected me and so they put their trust in me and I can do whatever I want to do there was a time if you get elected in this country you had to abide by all the rules and regulations or you could be removed today nobody's removed Nobody's removed. If you're really corrupt and really bad, you can become president. You can become the head of the whole uh, the whole government. So, as far as I'm concerned, the U.S. government is in trouble, and I know what's coming. It's not going to be around much longer. So we need to enjoy it while we while we have what we have right now, because whatever's coming on this earth, you don't want to know. So, unfortunate, but that's the facts. That's the facts of the world, of the matter of the world in which we live. So, well, what are we that's looking? That's why again, I say it again. I just say, what are we looking forward to? Oh, uh, we're looking forward to. <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, you've heard me say this before. Uh-huh. <clears throat> that, you know, a lot of people say, "Well, there's a light at the end of the tunnel," and I said, "Yes, the light at the end of the tunnel is a train coming." Uh, so. What we have to look forward to is educating ourselves and hoping and and spiritually looking for some sort of a spiritual intervention in the man and mankind's world, the physical world. That's what keeps me alive is just uh, picturing and hoping that something uh, uh, other than what is human uh, impacts us in some way. I, I kind of hope that there is actually an extraterrestrials here. Uh, I, at this point, it doesn't matter if they're good or bad. All I want to see is somebody who has the power to do something, period. Because we humans just don't have the power to, to change anything. We don't have the power because we don't understand what's going on to start with. And if we did understand, we don't have the power to do anything about it. Because knowledge is power. We don't have any knowledge. We have no idea about how things work. And so that's a good question. What are we looking forward to and what ultimately at the end of the day is going to happen to us in America? I don't know. I don't know. I choose to believe, um, based on everything I've heard over the years, that there very well might be some sort of an intervention uh, in our human affairs on the earth uh, by something higher than we are, something far, far more uh, seriously powerful than we are as humans. So I don't know, Christians think of it as God intervening in mankind's affairs. <clears throat> I think of, of it as uh, maybe some sort of an extraterrestrial presence on the earth that's going to change uh, the way we live. Um, like you, I don't know. I'm just go, I just live from day to day like everyone else does. But I do know some kind of a change is going to happen, and it looks like it's happening now. So I don't know where it's going to go. I don't understand what the you know what 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 could happen that that could help us because the whole damn world is so corrupt now. The United States government is so corrupt through and through, and yet it was the best of any government on the earth at one time, and it became totally 100% corrupt. And there's only about four or five people I have seen in federal government <clears throat> that appear to be honest and good people. So it doesn't say all congressmen and senators are bad, because there are obviously some that are very, very good people who are doing a lot of very important work to try and save this country, but uh, you know, it's only four or five, maybe a dozen at the most, against the uh, you know m- multiple millions of people in this country who don't know from nut. They don't know what's going on. They don't care. Right. <clears throat> so all what I do and what I've always tried to do is just to wake up the people to, generally speaking, awaken the public to the kind of problems they they face. I just try and, and educate people to what uh, the things that they don't know about, the things they've never heard about, and show them all of the strangeness of the world that we live in, 
<clears throat> that cause people to think and question, where did we come from? You know, what are we doing right now? Where are we going as a, as a human race? So that's what I've always tried to do, is just try and excite the people to question things and, uh, and use their mind for the first time. That's why, uh, and I, 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 I've been able to do that a bit, and it's finally caught on now. <clears throat> it's true that there are a lot of people that are now questioning and, and reading and beginning to understand the problems we are now facing as a human race. So I did, some, I did the best I could do, and I'm still trying to do it even today. So where is that, I mean, y'all? Well, it seems like recently, um, within the last 10 years or so, at least, uh, there's been a lot of upheaval, I would say, against um, the establishment, you know, Republican or Democrat. You know, we had a couple of uh, grassroots movements that took place. We had a libertarian running uh, twice who basically opened up right. everybody's eyes to say, and said, hey, look, you're, this is this is what's really going on. And this is this is where we're screwing up. So yep. a lot of people think, right. but it but it. I, I was really surprised as how fast it also uh, petered out. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, you're what, right. What, it's like how it's uh, trying to keep that momentum going is almost. It's like it's almost like a, uh, you're you're uh, walking into a tidal wave. Try, you know, trying to trying to keep your momentum going, when, especially when you got a whole bunch of the the people who are supposed to be backing you who are, who are dropping like flies, saying, oh, we don't want anything to do with it anymore." Yeah, well, you're right. That's true. And um, <clears throat> it's very, very difficult to keep the momentum up. The only people who can do that is the CIA. They can do that. They can introduce, introduce into uh, American society the drug culture. They can keep that going. And the, and the hippie uh, revolution in America, that was all CIA and NSA produced. And... Uh, then the drug culture as it came slowly into, and then of course with the the most successful political movement on the earth, period, is the Marxist communism. It's the most successful movement on earth, and the reason why is because it dominates the whole entire planet today, and the people have no idea in the world what it is or how it works but they all fall in line with it. And so as far as I'm concerned, it's the most successful political movement on the earth today is Marxist communism because it's practiced all over America, all over Europe, and all over the rest of the world, <clears throat> and nobody even knows what it is. I mean, you can... Yeah, uh, you, they, they really don't understand how it works. No, not and at all. I, I tried to explain it to somebody when I did some research on it and started seeing how it really worked. I was like, okay. And I, I tried to explain it to somebody as, and it's probably a very oversimplistic way of explaining. I said, Com communism is actually probably the most extreme form of capitalism you're ever going to see ever. Oh, I got that right. That's exactly right. So, yeah. You're right on target. The most extreme form of capitalism that can exist on the earth is communism. Because communism is collecting up on the masses of the world to work on the one roof. Everybody works for the state, and the state controls everything. And therefore, that's why the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the, all the international bankers, the Illuminati bankers of the world, today that are running the world, they're the ones that financed, organized, and helped found the Communist Party in the Soviet Union. And when the, and when the Soviet Communists were starving in uh, 1918, 1919, 1920, uh, the, uh, the international bankers in Germany, England, America, uh, Australia, the big international bankers were pitching in huge sums of money and sending it to, uh, to uh, Lenin and Trotsky and Stalin and, and, all, and, you know, and all the big corporations in America and Europe, from uh, you know, the um, automobile agencies, Ford and Chrysler and General Electric and General Motors, 
were building all of uh, Nazi Germany, all the plants, all the truck plants in, in Russia today. The, the largest single truck plant on the earth today is in Russia. It's called the Kerma River Project. Kerma River Project is the single largest automotive truck plant on the earth, period. And it's, I think it's somewhere like 25, 30 miles north of Moscow. And it's uh -huh. enormous. It's massive. And it's owned by General Motors and Ford Motor Company. And so General Motors and Chrysler uh, and, and Ford Motor Company are building for Russia and for the Soviet Union and now for Russia, building their uh, half-tracks, track, half tracks, their troop carriers, their tanks, right. uh, their um, jeeps. Could, could I interject again? one thing? Yeah. I, I, think that's, I think that's called the Kama River Project, and Fiat, believe it or not, has a tremendous interest there as well, and Fiat is uh, controlled mainly by the Vatican. Well, that, that makes me feel warm all over, <laughs> just knowing that. Yeah, that, that's nice. I feel much better about everything, <laughs> knowing that the Holy Father's involved in, in, yeah, in uh, this crap, too. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, I, I, I was just re trying to remember that. That's a long time ago. Uh, hold on. <sighs> so, anyway... Uh, so much for all of that. And of course, the Vatican is involved in everything, period. I don't care what it is. Child trafficking, dope, government, uh, you know, terrorism. The Vatican is involved up to the neck with all of it. And uh, the uh, what's the Vatican propaganda due, the prop propaganda due, P2 Lodge in the Vatican are the people who are behind world terrorism, all the you know, bombing and stations and bombing airports and all that. That's propaganda due. Uh, the P2 Lodge in the Vatican were operating around the world as terrorists. So if you want to talk about the terrorists, just go and arrest the Vatican and find out you know, how much they've been financing and organizing and directing uh, all the terrorism in the world today. <clears throat> and why? So that the England, America, and the Western powers can come in and try and make things right. You know, once terrorism breaks out in the country, then America and England have to go in and settle everything down and, and protect everyone and try and bring peace to the region. And to bring peace means uh, they take over. The country, you know, America takes over another country. And now they've lost their sovereignty, they've lost their country. But at least it's peaceful now because most people are in jail and, uh, and, and, the, and the people who weren't peaceful, they're dead. And so uh, that's the way it works is that the uh, Vatican causes the problems and then the Americans and the English have to go in and settle things down and put things back together again. But at, at the end result is that when, it, when America and England are through, you now have a fully communistic country in which the Pope and the, and, the, and the international bankers of Europe and America now control that populace. And little by little by little, they take over the world until now they finally have the entire world of mankind living under a Marxist-Leninist uh, philosophy and their governments, and most people have no idea about it, have no idea in the world what they're doing and where, you know, where the power comes from and who's behind all of this mess. So it's a hell of a story, and uh, but the thing that bothers me is the fact that our news media, they're not telling us nothing. They never have and they never will. And they wouldn't even be working at all if they, if they started telling the people the truth. Right. So I just do the best I can and thank God for people like Wendy and all the other people who have radio shows that are giving a voice to the people who know so that uh, people can wake up and begin right. to see what's going on. Yeah, I was just speaking of the, the media. I was just watching this documentary about um, David Crowley, who was going to make this movie called Gray State a few years back. And 
it was all new world, anti new world order. This is what's going to happen if we keep going down this road. And he's showing the totalitarian state and I have uh, the RFID chips yep. and you know all all the stuff that uh, alternative media has been talking about for for years. And he went to Hollywood because because this thing had picked up so much underground steam. Uh, he got an offer. He went to Hollywood to talk to a couple of producers. They offered him thirty million dollars to make the movie, and immediately after, this guy went on a downward spiral that was that was just unbelievable. It wound up with him uh, killing his wife and kid, and then himself. And I was watching this whole thing, going, "Okay, that didn't happen by accident." No, no, so, no. They did not want this no. movie made. Somebody didn't want this movie made, and they took this well, guy. Well, that's 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 quite quite obvious, yeah. And uh, and, uh, and and obviously, this whole idea of exposing these kinds of truths to the world through motion pictures is not going to happen. I mean, you know, they're not, uh, Hollywood is too too uh, involved in all the dirty stuff that's going on in the world. And so uh, to get anything out of Hollywood today, you might as well forget it. They're not, they're not about to tell you anything. No, no, they're, they're but, already pretty upset about what has been exposed. Yeah, uh, right as a matter, yeah, as a matter of fact, what, what has happened in the past that was exposed. Uh, the last good movie that I saw that uh, was really scary because it was so true was Eyes Wide Shut. When right. Stanley Kubrick made that movie, it was, a, and uh, there are people who feel that a lot was left out, that the studios left a lot of that script out and didn't put it in. But even what what they did leave in was good enough to at least tell you the way the world really works. Incidentally, that big um, party, the big sex party that uh, it was in the movie Eyes Wide Shut was filmed at uh, Baron de Rothschild's home in England. I, a lot of people didn't, didn't know that, but that no, I gorgeous, didn't. I didn't yeah, know that, that gorgeous home, it was actually filmed in Rothschild's home. And, uh, oh. yeah. So, I can imagine then that that, that that scene was probably not something that was uncommon for that room either then. Yeah, I would. I think you're exactly right, and that's why he chose it because he obviously he knew what's going on. He knows where it's going on, and so if you're going to film that movie and make it real, then you might as well go to the real place that happens. And uh, so he filmed it at Rothschild's home in London, and uh, it just has that look about it too. You know, it has that real incredible look to uh, a demonic place where demonic people would live and uh, so anyway that's that's where we are today and that's one of the main reasons why I don't really worry about or think about too much what's going on in the world today because I know what's going on I know where it came from I know where we are now and if it doesn't change I know where we're going to be in about 30 years from now so uh, I'll just do what I do do the best I can and I've done the best I can uh, in, in spite of all the things that have happened to me. And believe me, it's not fun doing what I do. But uh, it's 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 who I am, and that's what I do. So, uh, but it's you know you're, you're really looking for trouble when you start to expose uh, the public to what's really going on. And, uh, and you know you you a lot of people end up in prison. Or end up dead, uh, or wiped out financially and totally destroyed. And so, but I just, like I said, I just do what I do and see where it goes. All right, everybody. I think that's uh, that's us for this week. 